Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Jillian Barry, and today we have a very big video in store for you guys. We have Juicing Jewels on. She is also online under the Raw Vegan Family, and she has quite the healing story through raw foods and juicing. She healed her alcoholism, prescription drug addiction, an eating disorder, and many health problems, including depression, anxiety, digestive issues, and so many other things. And she has a few big announcements for us as well. And she also has a daughter who I believe is three, who is mostly fruitarian and eats raw vegan as well, Nina. So we're going to talk about that and let's hop right into it. Hey, Jules, how's it going? Hey, Jillian. Thank you so much for having me on. I just want to say that I love your channel. I love how you are this neutral a supporter of so many different lifestyles and you just allow us to have a platform and to, sh to share our stories. And so first off, I'm just very grateful for you and what you're doing for, you know, spreading truth, empowering people and for our community as a whole. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for saying that. I love sharing stories and you're right. I'm neutral and I'm all just for everyone doing what's right for them even if that's not vegan. So I'm not very typical, but I'm just like, everyone has to follow their own path. So I'm so excited to hear about your path. And you shared some exciting news with me the other day. So I just want to start with this. You are going on Dr. Phil next week, right? Yeah. So I am sharing a couple really exciting pieces of news here today with you because, you know, I love this channel and I, I feel safe here to share. So Dr. Phil will be coming out. I We are filming on Valentine's Day, so soon here, February 14th. And then uh, I'm not sure the air date, but I will, you know, figure that out. So he has called me onto the show. I didn't even know if it was real. I was like, is this really Dr. Phil? And it just happened through Instagram. So social media is so incredible in so many ways. Um, there's obviously pros and cons, but yeah, they reached out and then I kind of did some research. Okay, well, what's this person's email? You know, where are they calling me from? And everything pans out to be the real Dr. Phil show. So I am really, really excited to go on and a little bit nervous. I have seen a few really crazy vegans on there and yeah. I'm hoping to just get to share my story and be me, but I'm swallowing my ego and whatever happens, happens. I'm here to share my truth and inspire others regardless of the reaction from uh, <laughs> the public. Yeah, I feel like you can handle whatever he brings your way and like kind of stand in your own and what you believe in. Um, and that will probably that might air before this airs this video because I have a few videos done already that I have to post first. So that might already be up by the time this is up. If it is, I will link it down below. And hopefully it's positive. I know I've seen Dr. Phil like, I don't know, are you prepared if he does start like digging into you saying like, this diet's crazy? Why are you feeding your daughter this way? Or like, if he gets like that, like, are you expecting maybe that? And do you have a plan for like, how you're gonna handle that? I definitely like don't know how it's gonna go I feel like I don't have expectations I am highly aware that it could be hey you know this seems like child abuse you seem like you have a problem let's talk about it that's fine you know like everything is fine because I have actually been practicing for over a year now with interviews and I have been you know attacked many times and the first you know, times you're, you're asked a certain question or challenged in a certain way, you may not know what to say. Oh, I don't actually know the answer to that. And then you immediately go and do the research and you're like, okay, I can never, you know, not know that answer again. I have to know why do I do this and what's the, you know, actual reasoning behind it. So I've been studying my butt off and I have been challenged so many times in so many interviews that I feel like I can be prepared for anything. And yeah. I'm also like that type of person that truly doesn't care that much about mm -hmm. my what other people think about me. I've always yeah. been pretty independent in my thinking and very unique. And yeah, I 
I guess, you know, I am just doing it because like I said, it is such massive exposure to share, you know, such an, an amazing healing story. And if I don't know the actual numbers, but if 5 million people watch the show and 4 million people say, wow, that girl's insane. And 1 million <laughs> people, 1 million people say, wow, I'm inspired. And I would like to eat more fruit and more raw foods. Then it's worth it to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to like, and- you know, serve when you first went like when you first came to social media with your different lifestyle and with your daughter having a different lifestyle like did it hurt at all like dealing with the hate or people saying things about the way you feed your daughter anything like that or did you always have like that thick skin and like strong belief that it's the right way Um, like did you ever second guess it like you know with people making videos and stuff did it ever has it ever made you second guess like maybe like maybe it shouldn't be this way or no Cause you know, some yeah, of these think- people can be a bit convincing when people see these videos and like, do you know what I mean? It's like they, you hear some people like second guessing themselves and they can be like pretty nasty. <laughs> yeah. There are times, I mean, as I've gone through this process of, you know, being public with my lifestyle, I have kind of grown a thicker skin because you just kind of, as you go through it, initially it hurts, you know, like, Oh, she needs her teeth fixed. Oh, her hair's too thin. Oh, look, she's just anorexic. You know, these things at first, they're like, ooh, that kind of hurt, you know? Mm -hmm. But then you think about the internet, okay? The internet, uh, people don't say what they're, they don't behave in the way they actually behave to your face. They're hiding. Who knows what they look like? Who knows what drugs they're taking? Who knows what their diet is like, you know? And oftentimes people who are just simply trying to attack you are suffering intensely immensely with their own self-esteem issues their own health their own traumas and so just trying to be loving and say I'm sorry that person is is feeling in these low vibrations and I hope that they can one one day find you know, the, the love that you have and cultivate for the world when you find self-love. So, um, yeah, it, it hurt less and less. That being said, yeah, at first it was like, I did get some en- enemies, I guess. And my neighbors, my neighbors in my old house, they were my friends. They came to my daughter's birthday party and I posted something because I'm, you know, known for just like posting kind of crazy stuff, uh, you know, eliminations and doing these like long, long juice fast coaching that other people maybe don't do. I posted something about a prescription drug use, which, you know, many, many people utilize prescription drugs and they see it as a lifeline. And I respect everybody's lifestyle and everything. Uh, now a little bit more. But when I was really into my changing, you know, my mother was heavily affected by uh, addiction to prescription drugs. And I was angry about a lot of the other people in my life that have been hurt. And I shared something about, you know, a lot of prescription drugs are literally, it's just, it is just drugs. So it's still an addiction. And sometimes, yeah, we need to use these things to help us get to a healthier place where we can manage it on our own. But I mentioned something about that. And my neighbors were like, wow, you're a cult leader. You're terrible. And like, they just ripped into me. And so, okay. So I do want to talk about Nina and how this works, what she eats in a day, like how it's gone the first few years of her life eating this way, if you ate this way pregnant. But before we get into that, I want to hear your story because I don't know your healing story. I know like you say you you were able to get over eating disorders and digestive problems, depression, um, your addictions to alcohol, which many of us, I used to have an addiction to that and many other things. So has raw foods, have raw foods and juicing just totally healed all that and transformed your life. And I'd love to rewind and go back and just hear your whole story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And it has transformed my whole life. And just real quick about the uh, attacks and stuff. It's like, you just realize that those people, you're probably feeling judged and like you, you know, put them down, but that's really not what it is. 
so yeah, I just moved on. Anyway, the the story began about seven years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, where I was an addict. I, you know, would just not be sober ever. I had prescription drugs like Adderall and uh, benzodiazepines, and then I um, drank alcohol whenever I wanted. And I also tried uh, recreational drugs whenever they were around. So just having no self-respect and then with the eating disorder, uh, binging, purging for this all went on. All these behaviors went on for 12 years. Wow. Yeah. So I like, I really thought, wow, I'm just kind of stuck uh, like this forever. This is just who I am and really feeling down about it. Low self-esteem, of course, is at the core of all of these behaviors and low self-respect and not much self-love, not being your own best friend. And things got really bad for me after 12 years of these behaviors, as you can imagine. Uh, Not even sure how I made it that long, but basically I had a really bad rock bottom nightmare year where I was 29 and my life was just totally out of control. And I fell asleep at the wheel while drinking and driving. Luckily, I didn't hurt anybody. I wasn't hurt, but it was like a really eye opening experience. And I was just really shocked. Uh, I was feeling ready to, you know, as they say in the program, surrender and say, I'm not in control of my life and I need help. Um, That being said, I uh, also had some difficulties with relationships. Obviously, you know, my family and I were on the best terms by this point. And I didn't really have a lot of friends, but friends I did had have had the same Uh, lifestyles. Mm -hmm. So, and I really, I tried rehab, I tried meetings, I didn't feel like it was working for me, it wasn't the right path for me at that time. And so so that's when I met Emelina's father. And uh, he was definitely life changing for me when we met. He, uh, he was a vegan. He had a vegan tattoo. His license plate said no veal. He was very, very uh, adamant and strong with his lifestyle. He had already been a vegan for like, I don't know, um, 10 years and very strict. He never cheated. And I had like, I had always wanted to try veganism, but I was heavily addicted to cheese. Mm -hmm. I really love cheese. So I, the first thing I did with him, um, was I got sober, you know, I, I told him, I don't want to drink anymore. I don't want to take these pills anymore. And so he was really like my full support. He stayed by my side. And I think I asked him to go to the bar like every day for six months. And he just was like, no, not today. No, no, you don't want to do that. And eventually it let up and I didn't want to go anymore. And I found happiness just (laughs) in sobriety, which was really cool. I wasn't even sure if it was coming back. You know, all those times you're waiting, the months you're waiting, it's hard. So the first thing I did was get sober. Then I was like, wow, you know, you're vegan. And I've always wanted to try that, but I haven't had the self-discipline. I didn't really know much about self-discipline at that time. It wasn't my thing. So he was like, okay, well, let's go vegan. Uh, Because, you know, underlying the addictions that I had and the self abuse behaviors were, like you said, my anxiety, my depression. And then from the drug and alcohol abuse, I had weak liver, a gallbladder that was weakened, and pancreas. So when I was eating, I had pain and air and it was like, even if I ate one little bite of something, it would just happen and I would kind of blow up and have to like squeeze the air out. And it was just really uncomfortable and really obvious that I wasn't very healthy. So went vegan successfully 
with the support. And then I uh, was still struggling, obviously, with some mood swings, some depression, anxiety, just not feeling happy. As But I did feel a major improvement. I was going to the bathroom more. I had more energy. But I remembered opening this book in college. And it I don't know if it was Fully Raw, Christina, or someone similar. But I was like, wow, this is the way to eat. Yeah. And I was just blown away that you could make all these beautiful recipes with natural ingredients that made sense to me. But at the time I was an addict and I was just like, close the book. I don't know any of these ingredients. I can't even like manage, you know, my life right now. So that looks great, but I I can't do it right now. I mean, if it had been a book about maybe eating more fruit, just eating more bananas, it maybe would have been different. (laughs) (laughs) But this book stayed in my mind forever, you know? So years later, while I'm with Danny, I'm thinking, wow, veganism is working, but it's not enough. And then I say, like, would you like to try raw veganism with me? And to my great pleasure and surprise, he actually was like, yeah, I've done that. I've been raw vegan, like off and on throughout my whole vegan process. He's kind of a a chef. Uh, He's done a lot of just making beautiful raw vegan foods. And he had all the equipment, the juicer, the food processor, the fancy blender, everything, the dehydrator, and he just had it all in storage. And I'm like, what? Like, this is so great. Let's get started today. And so he was really my mentor in a lot of ways. And he just helped me. He made food for me and he taught me to make food. So we went right into this like heavy uh, nuts. We ate a lot of oils and greens, and then we didn't really eat a lot of fruit. So it was like really gourmet um, raw foods. However, I started to sleep much better. I started to wake up uh, feeling alive and Mm -hmm. not that groggy, oh gosh, how am I going to get up for work today uh, feeling. And that was quite noticeable. And he also told me, okay, on day 30, if you do this 100% raw, you will get sick and you will experience detox. Now, as someone who had been living a regular diet and not in accordance with working with my body, I was like, are you sure? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's real, but we'll go ahead and and try it because I'm curious and I hope you're right. Day 30, I got sick. I had to stay from work. Uh, (laughs) It was it was like I had the flu. I had um, diarrhea, like a fever, drainage. And then just like he said, the next day I felt amazing. Wow. Crazy. I didn't experience detox. So, well, it's good. It didn't last for very long for you. Yeah. Well, I was coming from a pretty, you know, unhealthy lifestyle, lots of cheese, lots of dairy, and then the drinking and the alcohol, you know, alcohol makes you eat total crap. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it worked just like he said. Maybe, you know, some of it was, he told me it was going to happen. My body set it up, but yeah, that did happen. And then I was like really sold and I started to listen more like, oh, I have a headache. Oh, don't take an Advil. Just drink more coconut water, drink more water, rest. And I'm like, okay. And then I started to kind of just realize my body wasn't some sort of machine where I was like, okay, wake up coffee. Okay. Let's Mm -hmm. go to sleep. You know? this uh, and turning off and on when we are in control trying to control our bodies we are completely working against nature Mm -hmm. and our bodies do all this stuff miraculously on its own uh if we just trust so as i was building this great relationship finally like realizing my body was this miraculous machine I was raw for four years, very strict, although I wouldn't say 100% the four years, like there were times where we ate pasta, vegan pasta or something. Mm -hmm. But it was like, 
bland and didn't yeah. feel good. Like definitely not what I remembered. And so we stayed pretty, pretty uh, focused on being raw, had a lot of fun with all the recipes we found and I'm learning. And then I got pregnant with Nina. Wow. And did you get pregnant easily with Nina? Um, it actually, it took about six months of trying. So I guess that's average for, uh, you know, today. So it didn't take too long or it wasn't immediate either. So Mm -hmm. somewhere in between, but I was really, really excited. And one of the coolest parts was coming from such an unhealthy lifestyle. I didn't need to face any addictions. I didn't need to change anything. In fact, I thought that I was like doing the most incredible I could ever be doing and just, you know, keep on doing it while I'm pregnant. And Um, was it easy to like give up the addictions? Because like for me, when I went raw, I used to drink every day for, I think probably close to 10 years and just getting into the raw foods lifestyle. I just felt so good that I stopped even wanting the alcohol and stuff. So it wasn't like super hard. Like it wasn't something where like, I felt like I had to go to AA or like, do something to like get through the with like the not drinking I just didn't want it anymore because I felt so good right and then everything changed my circle of friends everything was it like that for you it was like easy or did you still struggle with like the addictions like for a while well I got pretty out of hand with the alcohol and where I was pretty much drinking all day every day like whiskey Mm -hmm. or corona like in the morning wow so like intervention like all day (laughs) In South Florida, Miami, people do that. So it was like just my kind of lifestyle. And I actually had to go some through some mild um, withdrawal. And then, you know, I still had kind of the pull, but I would have raw alcohol. So I would have like red wine, fancy red wine or sake or like a little spiked kombucha. But it was like the... It was only in the evening and it was like one glass and it, it completely changed. And then after we're, where we're getting to in the story, when I started to juice, not even the juice fast, but when I brought the juice into my life, I changed a lot because I used to have my cough, my red wine in the night and then my coffee in the morning and then have my raw foods throughout the day. And uh, I just didn't want the coffee because the Mm -hmm. juice was so great. And I uh, couldn't really feel the amazingness of the juice when I had the coffee before. So I stopped the coffee, which was always kind of detrimental to me with my anxiety anyway. Then you need the wine to chill out. Then you need the coffee to wake up again. It's like a vicious cycle. So I just found that I didn't want to mess up with the wine because I wanted the juice in the morning. And then I didn't want to need the coffee. That was the start of it. I still was like an alcoholic at heart because I was like, well, I can't go the rest of my life without alcohol. That would be so boring and so sad. So Mm -hmm. I'm not going to even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, after my long juice fast, uh, I tried alcohol, like a small sip of like spiked kombucha. And I went from blissed out perfection, feeling angelic to immediately one sip, feeling like this massive, Mm -hmm. like just downfall from my vibrations and feeling everything taken away from me in that moment uh, um, that felt so nice. And so now I had this correlation, oh, alcohol and even drugs, you know, they bring me down. So then I had this revelation, oh, addicts, you know, that's pretty common. Most of us are addicts or have had addictions in our lifetimes. And we are looking for that high, mm-hmm. that bliss. And we are just not taught that it is our right. If we stay away from poisons and toxins and chemicals, we can feel that bliss. But we don't know that, right? Because we're poisoned and bombarded from Mm -hmm. birth or even in the womb. And uh, we we feel low vibrational. So we want, oh, little alcohol would be great. And now I feel better. But when you're living up here, you drink the alcohol, take the drugs, you come down. It's quite easy to say, well, I don't like that. I want to feel up here, you know, as 
as a an addict, like I want to mm-hmm. stay high. But and it just um, tricks you because it makes you think you feel better. And maybe in some ways it does make you forget about things and feel wet, better for a bit, but then you end up feeling even worse. So it's like, it's just a bad cycle. And it's so great. You got off all this. Where do you think you would be if you didn't right now? Oh my gosh. I would probably be dead, like dead yeah. or in a really bad situation because drugs and alcohol make you, they strip away any human decency that you have. So they ruin um, lives. And I'm not saying they do it in every case. They don't like, but they can ruin a lot of people's life. Like I remember there was this girl in high school. She had like, she was so popular, had so much potential. And then she got like big into drugs. And it's just like, she's the same age as me now, 40. And her life is just like, not good all from the drugs. It's like, it can ruin lives. It's so sad. It's so good. Not enough for everybody. I get it that some people are like, I can have my glass of wine. I have no problems with it. And it works for them. I don't judge, do it. But for a lot of cases, it ruins a lot of families. And it's just like, and it's so normal to drink. Like, I don't know about you, but the town I grew up in, in Canada here, the town I grew up in, it's just so normal to drink. Everybody's drinking with their parents, with like the other people's parents on the weekends. I wasn't drinking with my parents, but other people's parents, everybody's throwing parties, getting wasted every weekend. And like, that was normal. It was almost like not normal if you weren't. And hopefully that changes like, in society. I don't know, but. Yeah, I really had a little hard time after my massive awakening on the long juice fast, like just accepting reality because I kind of was a hermit. I just stayed by myself with my family. We were all do- doing the lifestyle and uh, I was staying in nature and just with my people in the lifestyle with my business and you guys. So when I actually went out into the world again, I was quite in shock because when you've been that pure for that long, you know, the smell of cigarettes the the smell of the alcohol, the smell of the foods that mm-hmm. are, you know, very chemical laden. It's like, it's almost like traumatic. It's like, oh my gosh, my fellow humans think it's think that they need to poison themselves to have fun. And this is all we do. Where are the people, you know, who are having sober ecstatic dances and uh, meditation and song circles and Like, so I had to, like you said, detox my life and decide and get stronger because at first you're like, well, maybe I'll do that with you because you're my old friend and that's what we always do. And I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable Mm -hmm. or in, or inferior in in, in any way, but you get over that really quick because you're like, okay, maybe I just won't hang out with this person. If they, my friends don't need to do the same things as me but they need to support me just as I support them doing any lifestyle that works for them. And, uh, you know, you don't want to spend time with people who are going to bring you down or try to bring you back to a lower vibration. No. So this is like, this life change has totally changed probably your whole circle. It's changed your life completely, right? Like your whole circle of people. And speaking of people like good thing, maybe you met Danny, because who knows if you would have taken this vegan path and like been led down all this and you wouldn't have Nina, we'll talk about in a bit. But how would you say like the raw foods and the juicing have changed your life the most? And did it heal everything? Like, do you feel like you're free of depression and all like the physical health ailments and the mental health ailments as well? Uh, So I would say that my life is absolutely 1000% different. The Julie that existed before died and I have been completely reborn. I wouldn't compare it to any other time in my life. It is the most transformative of all, like nothing else compares. And really it was that juice fast. So after I went raw for these four years, I had started my Instagram and I was like, you know, I've got to share with the world these beautiful meals that I'm making and we're eating here. Like everyone deserves to know this most vital information. We can eat naturally and it's mm-hmm. not so difficult and it's fun. So I started this Instagram account. And at that time, I just saw like a lot of beautiful juices and people holding juice and vibrant colors and these mason jars. And I was like, I need that in my life. So that was the groundbreaking, groundbreaking, life-changing, insane, insane, 
uh, there was me before and me after experience because I went almost seven months on only juice and wow. yeah. And my partner did it with me. My daughters had juice every single day, all day since that day we started our juice fast May 1st, 2021. Wow. It's seven months. So how, like, what were the benefits you experienced and how did that totally change your life? And like, what inspired you to try and do a juice fast? And did you intend to do that long? I know these are a lot of questions. Yeah, no, I love it. So I just was still struggling with, uh, you know, way less, but I still had depression. I have a lot of family trauma, trauma stuff, events um, that were just kind of haunting me. And I just wanted to be normal. You know, I don't know what's normal, but I wanted to um, increase the quality of my life. And I had already seen these improvements and I just wanted to go as far as I could go. I thought that I had gone the farthest I could go. And that was just it. And then I started to do the, the Instagram scene that people were juicing. And then I started to look up juice fasting on YouTube and I found John Rose who was life-changing for me because he said, you can do 90 days on juice. And I, I had done the master cleanse, the lemon cayenne maple syrup for 10 days, eight days, three days at a time over the last five, six years. And then I'd go back to drinking and eating bagels, cream cheese, and eggs or whatever mm -hmm. pizza. And I, I always felt so good on these fasts. Um, and then I just thought you can only feel good on a fast. You just, you know, you can't feel good in real life because I didn't know I was an educated. So when I found that you could do a 90 day juice fast, I was like, is that even real? And that's in, that's wild. And I want to do that, but I didn't think I could give it. I couldn't wrap my brain around that. You know, I was eating every day, three times a day. I was like, okay, we'll think about that. And I'll have a goal of 30 days because I had to accomplish 10 days many times over the years, probably over the, in my twenties to my, to 20 to 30, I've done 50, 10 day juice fasts um, yeah. in between my regular lifestyle. So I, I started with a group of seven women on Instagram, just people who randomly wanted to do this. I was really, really shocked. There were other women who wanted to even do this. And we did 30 days together. No one quit. I mean, definitely people quit. I think we started with like 30 people, but the people yeah. who was stuck with it, seven women did it. And um, I'm competitive. And so I was like, I'm not going to be the person who, <laughs> who quits. So that really helped me. And uh, I think support is everything. Stick with it. I feel like it's almost always so life-changing. If you can stick to a juice fast, it's like, very rare. I see someone stick to one like that and say like, no, it didn't work for me. Like, I feel like if you're drinking enough and like I did 37 days once, it was the best 37 days of my life. I did a couple last year and you and I are both affiliates with Nama, the best juicer ever. So I'll put both our codes down below. If anybody's looking to buy a Nama, then go support one of us and you will get the best juicer ever. It's like literally absolutely incredible. And yeah, so this juice cleanse totally changed your life then. Yes. So what started happening, of course, there was really hard, uh, you know, the first 30 days, I pretty much, I was a stay at home mom to my, my beautiful one year old at the time. So I could stay by my toilet, I could stay by my couch, I could stay by uh, the juicer, and kind of rest because she was one. So I'd watch her playing with water outside or watch her do a puzzle play with you know, I, I didn't have to physically be very active. So it was perfect for me. I needed a challenge. Motherhood was challenging. But uh, in a way of like, I'm sacrificing, you know, my goals right now. So I, having my own goals was really empowering. And I really it was the perfect time for me to say like, oh, I can have this just for me as I'm giving most of my life for my daughter right now. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I was super determined, super determined. I felt like I had can just kind of been a loser most of my life. Like Danny, you know, was so awesome, but I was just kind of the sidekick, like teach me things and I'm trying to be as good as you, but I didn't have 
any real um, self-esteem or self-love. And I was tired, tired of living like that. And I knew I could be more. So yeah, I saw John Rose. Then I like just randomly looked up random people's stories Mm -hmm. and it became really obvious to me that they were looking different. They sounded different. They spoke faster. They, They had more confidence. They had had a real ascension, what I was looking for, what Mm -hmm. I needed. And I was like, okay, 30 days went past. I couldn't believe I did 30 days. I mean, you know, the feeling it's like, did I really do that? That's, that's so life-changing for your brain and your, your ability to see what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I kept going. The team pretty much tapered off at that point. I think one woman went with me to day 50 And then I went on and Danny actually did it with me. My uh, partner at the time, he told me he was going to do three days (laughs) and then he just like kept going. And then on day 30, you know, it's about eliminating. So he, I'm just going to talk about it. He eliminated like a whole bowl of old waste in the toilet. And he was like, oh my God, like I'm just getting started. I'm going to continue. It's so crazy was- what comes out of people on these, even like my friend, Maggie J. Jackson, she got out so much mucoid plaque and like, so did you release a lot of it too? And maybe could you explain what it is for people who don't know? Yeah, absolutely. So that was the whole appeal to everything for me. I was like, wow. Okay. So we stop digesting new food and we just get all our nutrients in liquid form. And this allows our body to then pull down undigested food waste from the small intestine and bring it to the colon and focus on all that backed up old waste that there is supposedly there. You know, I didn't know. I did not know anything. I was just like, maybe it's there. You know, I looked my stomach. I had just had a baby, but I I'm small. I've never been overweight. I started the juice fast at like 112 pounds. I'm five foot. Um, so I had a flat stomach my whole life. And I was like, is there really pounds of waste in there? Sure enough there, I, I, uh, eliminated old waste and up through day 112. And I'll explain how I say that because I've been challenged a lot. Oh, Julie, you have an obsession with poop. It's just, we make poop every day. And Mm -hmm. that is true. We're always going to make poop even on a liquid diet, but when you're pooping, um, you're eliminating old waste, it is very smelly. It looks odd. It can be different colors, different consistencies, just straight up, just looking weird worms, mucus, like plaque, a mucoid plaque. And you know that you've never seen this stuff. This is not typical for you. And you're, you know, it's old waste if you are going through it. And so about on day 112, I started to eliminate like one very consistent bowel movement every single day, right around the same time. And it was like, I, I'm just going to explain. It was like, kind of, um, it wasn't solid and hard and like a log. It was more like loose, like color of whatever fruit I had. It didn't have any bad smell. And it was always like the size of my fist and only once a day. For a long time, there were like five to to seven eliminations or at least three to five eliminations a day. And all this stuff was very inconsistent, the smells, the appearance and everything. Um, And then this, no smell, you know, if anything, it was like a fruity smell and no different colors, all just the same, same, same. And this went on from day 112 to day 165. I was waiting for parasites. I was like, I bet I have parasites like, you know, most people. And I'm not saying I don't. Um, Maybe I didn't go long enough. Maybe they were living off the juice, but I didn't see any. And they could be microscopic, um, but I didn't have any uh, awareness of any parasites or any mucoid plaque because I had already been raw vegan for four years, uh, pretty much like 99% raw vegan for all those years. and. I, I know that the mucoid plaque is caused from refined sugars, um, foreign protein, which is meat and, and dairy, and then flour, gluten, 
these things are causing the mucoid plaque and I hadn't had them. So I, you know, I was a little disappointed even like, okay, no mucoid plaque, no parasites, but yes, 20 pounds of waste. So yes, it was wow. insane. Yeah. And I know you have some juice in clients. Like what is like the most, I think even more than 20 pounds of waste can come out of some people, right? Oh yeah. So I started my business, how to juicefast.com and I've juice fasted, you know, over 250 people in the last two years, I've lost count, but it's really like, it's everyone who comes to me. Okay. I've done children. I've had elderly wow. people. I've had many, many people who would like to lose a hundred pounds or more. And they, they do with me. They, they might have 20 pounds left to lose. Um, when they're done with me, but th I am the only coach out there who will juice fast coach you as long as you want to go. I have so much experience with this and I know it was a dangerous, scary thing before I kind of, I feel like I broke the, the record every, uh, the longest I ever saw any documented juice fast were like the man who did 107 days on YouTube. And a German woman who had done, you know, 90 and John Rose. So when I did 165 and I documented everything on my YouTube channel, the raw vegan family, and even the eliminations, I, you know, really sparked interest in a lot of people. And then I provided, I took a, a risk and I said, Hey, I will be coaching for this. And so most of my people that I coach, uh, I have three days, 10 days, 30 days, mm -hmm. but the majority will go over a hundred days with me or wow. at least 90. And, and then you can probably help people stay on track, like having that coach. And I know since then, like I interviewed, do you know, Sarah Erica, I interviewed her. I she did it. She did 366 days. Cause she was oh, having yes. a lot of health problems. She's the longest that I know of. I know, actually, I know Tanya, my friend, and then Jenny, I think they did two something last year, which is like, wow. But Sarah Erica, she was in a wheelchair and she was seeing doctors for years and they were like, there's nothing else we can do. Like you basically, your days are numbered. This is, you have to accept this. Like we, they tried like everything and she was just like, you know what? I'm not giving up. And she decided to do a juice fast. And then at the end of the juice fast, like on day 366, she was running a 5k and like totally like out of the wheelchair. And like, yeah. it's the most inspiring, insane story. So I believe in the power of juicing. Like I said, when I did 37 days, like nothing. I never felt better. It is just like a miracle. And so now, I mean, you eat raw foods, you're raw vegan now. What does a typical day of eating look like for you? Like, what do you typically eat in a day? And how are you feeling now? So it took me a long time to get away from what I started to call liquidarianism. Because I had this amazing high, I was so my brain was in flow state all of the time. I would wake up like, you know, absolute like I, I would wake up like it was mid afternoon, you know, not like it was and I didn't need much sleep. I was sleeping like six hours instead of eight hours and I'm feeling great. And if my daughter woke me up in the night, I still felt great, even though mm -hmm. I, I was like nervous. Oh, no, she woke me up. Am I gonna have a bad day? Nope, no more of any of that. No more symptoms, no more digestive issues. My body was eliminating waste on its own. I didn't need any help with um, any herbal laxatives or anything. Uh, I was in bliss all the time. Everything seemed easy. And I was very, very, very connected to God, the universe, uh, the grass, the trees, my juices, everything was just like heaven. And um, I was very, uh, you know, I came from long line of extreme depression and feeling um, really having a hard time mentally with uh, happiness. And so I didn't want to let go of this, Jillian. I was like, I don't know if I want to stop. I, I don't know if I can, am I going to lose this? Am I going to lose this? I, I can't handle that. And so I waited and I was supporting Danny because most people eliminate waste endlessly and they never really get to that clean spot. They just stop when they feel great. And they're like, well, you know, I'll do it more later because I was small and I had that eating disorder. So I guess I had less than most people. But yeah, it was just like, so it was really hard. And I think that, that it's important to note, like the people who 
like Jenny and all those people that have, you know, come to me and been like, I saw your story and now I'm doing it. And it's so amazing. I think that it's important to note that like, it takes some time to adjust into a juice fast. So it takes some time to adjust back into food. And uh, so I started breaking my fast with fruits and I had, you know, then some raw food, but the raw food didn't really feel that good. And it lowered my vibe. I was like a hundred percent fruitarian for months and months on end. So when I brought in those vegetables and especially the nuts and oh my God, I had oil one time and it was just like uh, the, the vibrations plummeted. And, you know, I thought you, you got to like, think about it, you know, like, where do I want to live? You know, you don't, I don't now I have been, it has been over a year since my juice fast. And like, do you want to live on that tippy toppy, tippy top spot where you aren't really like people might think you're weird, you know, you're, you're like just in such a great place all the time. People might just kind of think you're a little nutty. Um, it's, it's like my friend, my friend, Eli from the free melon society. We have a couple of good yeah. videos coming up. They yeah. might already be on if they are, I'll post them below. He's an eight year fruitarian. So he yeah. eats only fruit. I've the odd time him. he'll have like a zucchini pasta or like at my birthday last year, he tried a couple raw gourmet stuff, but he's like 99.9% .9 only fruit. And he showed us what he eats in a day in those videos. Make sure you guys subscribe for those. Um, but he's like probably the most high vibe person I've ever met. And you can't even tell in his videos, but like when you meet him in real life, it's like he has the best energy and like aura of like anybody I've ever been around. And he looks yeah. so healthy when you see him in real life. It's crazy. And to be honest, when I first met him like a year or a year and a half ago, I was kind of like, my friend was like, he only eats fruit. And I was like, kind of expecting like, is this guy going to look good? Like, are you deteriorating? You only eat fruit? What? And then I was like, kind of blown away and shocked. He looks so good. And yeah, I would say like fruits and green juices to me are like when I feel my best, like so high vibe. And you do notice a difference with like the nuts and things like that. But I like to eat a variety. Do you think like long term, like, do you think you could only eat fruit for the like rest of your life and thrive long term, like without any issues? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, like, I'm genuinely curious. I know like everyone, some people are like, yeah, I think you can. And other people are like, I don't think so. I think we need a variety. But what are your thoughts on that? Even though it does make us feel great. Do you think like we could, you know, live for like 50 years on only fruit and be like, totally healthy? Yeah, absolutely. I do. Um, I think man was first breatharian, then liquidarian, then fruitarian. And now we've gotten here. And I think that food shortens our lives. I think we can live to be three, 400 years old if we, if we were on fruit from birth. That being said, when you are up there and you're that pure and then you're lonely and all your friends and family might think like, wow, it, it takes a very special person to want to stay there. And for me, I felt a little bit disconnected from my fellow man and woman. And I was like, you know, I'm curious about going back a little bit because I'm here. It's so amazing. But like, I do kind of miss these other things. So um, yeah, as I was experimenting with eating, again, everything kind of just felt lower vibes because you just gotta, you gotta come down from there. And yeah. um, then you consider, oh, maybe I should juice fast again, because uh, I'm going down with my vibes. But you know what, you're just used to up here. And here's pretty great too. Yeah. And so I do think you could do it forever. That being said, if you are, you have to be a hundred percent, you're going to go, Oh, you know, now I'm going to eat a big cashew salad <laughs> or worse. I'm going to go have like some uh, restaurant food. After that one meal, your body is not going to be, uh, you're going to need to go through a period of detox, which takes longer than we think. And then if you, you've got that in your head, that, that you've opened, awakened that appetite. Now your body wants to go back there. Now that's really hard. Now you need another 30 days on juice. You need, you need to get back to where you were. So scrambling like that, you just can't play. You can't be like, well, I'm going to be liquidarian and I'm going to eat this. Oh, now I'm liquidarian. Oh, now I'm going to eat this. Like that's torture. You have to uh, rid yourself of the addiction like these uh, breatharians do. And you can stay that way if you have great genetics you have your family maybe ate like that you are you're healthy enough and you've done the work slowly transitioning over years like the black airbender hasn't eaten in seven years he he thrives on coconut 
water. He's out of this planet, spiritual. He hasn't I mean, had any food. He just has had coconut water for seven years. Wow. Yeah, and sometimes he has juice, but he survives on the breath. He does breath work all day long, hours and hours and hours. And if you speak to him, wow. it's like you're not speaking to a human. So it's wow. like a very, very lonely lifestyle, you know, but if you're there, yeah. you feel so high, you love that. That's fine. But yeah, you can't play around. So I try to play around a little bit. Oh, let me eat something good. And then, and I, for a while I was eating just one meal a week, juicing Monday through Friday, feeling amazing. This is when I was building my business. I was working nonstop. And then, you know, I kept getting pulled to the food because I started to dabble. And then I was like, you know, I, I find comfort with the food. I can socialize more with the food. So I came down and I was okay with the level. That being said, I still live at a much higher level than ever before in my entire life. I still feel high on life and health all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I feel great. And my sadness is beautiful. It's not depression. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm crying and I'm human. This is a beautiful part of my life. I've learned everything from my juice fast. Uh, I remember at one point saying, I don't feel good. I have a lot of emotional release today. I'm dealing with like a lot of stuff coming up and, uh, you know, maybe I should take drugs. Maybe I should drink alcohol. Maybe I should eat something. You sometimes it can get really intense with the emotional releases and the old waste and the old trauma coming out. And I sat there and this was an epiphany. Like it was already like day 90. Clearly I wasn't going to go do drugs or alcohol. And this wasn't even part of my lifestyle anymore. But in that moment, I realized, no, you don't have to do anything. You just mm -hmm. sit there and feel uncomfortable. So now I base my life on that. You know, if something's hard or I have a hard time, I just sit there or I just process it instead of consuming something to numb and fix. And I uh, recently, you know, I was just trying fruit. My whole family was just trying to do fruit. And it was really hard, to be honest, for me. I come from a long line of meat eaters and uh, fake food eaters. Like I'm the only one who's even went vegetarian and they all thought I was nuts then. So yeah, it, I just didn't, I couldn't stay up there. I didn't really want to. And I'm very happy with where I am. That being said, I spent like a year trying to eat fruit and this sort of created some issues for me. Like I would eat fruit for like 16 days. And then I started to notice like I would have a little bit of cooked food, which wasn't a problem as like that. Um, when I was raw, I would be like, well, now I just really want to try like this restaurant and then we'd feel really bad and we go back on fruit for several days and I realized that this is not a healthy way to treat your body because it's too much like not knowing what's going on are we eating this way or are we eating this way and so I found that you know maybe I should eat some raw foods but there was a really big life change that kind of really solidified that for me and I haven't talked publicly about this, but I really wanted to do it today here with you and share this really beautiful life-changing news that I've recently found out that has definitely changed everything, including my lifestyle. So yeah, I, I'd like to share that with you today. Yeah, I'd love you to. Okay, so let me start at the very beginning of that story before I just give the news. So I was still enjoying my juice fasting lifestyle. I will juice fast, you know, a couple days or 10 days, nothing big. And then I will eat fruit or eat some raw foods. And, but mostly, yeah, I was still living that lifestyle of those three rotating things. So recently I started a challenge on New Year's Eve with a team of amazing uh, women trying to uh, heal. And uh, I said, you know, for the first time ever, I'm going to do it with you guys. We're just going to do this juice fast together. It's a 90 day juice fast. You know, I told you I got really addicted to that juice fast high. If we're supposed to live there, I don't know. I, for me, no, I'm not supposed to live there, but I wanted to, I was like, well, you know, I'm going to try again. I've been going through a lot in my personal life. And I thought, I'm just going to do this juice fast with you guys. So as I'm juice fasting, I'm not feeling the way I normally do on a juice fast. 
I was like feeling like I was going to black out almost daily. Like, wow, I'm not feeling good. And I was actually very nauseous the entire time. I actually started throwing up juices and juices were going bad in the fridge. I just didn't have any desire to, to, to drink my juice. The juice tasted bad. All of my favorite juices did not uh, look good. And so I just was like having one to two juices a day. And I was like, I'm going to do this. And um, to share a little bit more, I had already had a a false pregnancy, right? I had had a false pregnancy, um, which kind of led to this fast where I'm going to fast off the belly. I'm going to fast off the, the changes in my body. It wasn't real. It was like, a really devastating event. I wasn't pregnant. I was, you know, they told me a phantom pregnancy where, uh, your body shows signs. Maybe you've been through a lot of stress and you, your body copes with this fake pregnancy, false pregnancy, but you do get everything else, the hormones, the bodily changes, and you're convinced you're pregnant until you see an ultrasound. So that all happened. That was really traumatic for me. And so then I was like, you know, I'm not pregnant, you know, I'm not pregnant. I'm, Uh, I'm telling myself that because that's the cure to a phantom pregnancy. You're not pregnant. uh, You've seen the proof. So I'm fasting. I'm fasting. I'm not pregnant. I couldn't be pregnant. And I'm having all these issues. And I'm just thinking, you know, I love juice fasting. I trust juice fasting. And so it's an evolution for me as well. Every day I'm learning and open and Mm -hmm. I'm very open to learning and I don't pretend to know everything. I found out that I was in early pregnancy. So I spent 10 days on fruit fasting the first 10 days of my pregnancy. Uh, And then I went to juice fasting and um, my juice consumption was very low because of all the nausea, which is because I was hungry, you know, Mm -hmm. when I was um, hungry with my first, uh, I ate and the nausea came and I would eat and I'd be fine. I didn't, you know, I was very stubborn. I didn't think this was a possibility. It wasn't a plan. So I just was like, I'm just going to go, go, go. And then I went to, um, you know, a random doctor's appointment where totally shocked me and said, Hey, Jules, you are pregnant. And it's very, uh, it's very, very positive, like right away. So well, congratulations. I mean, you told me before we came on, so everybody knew, but you're letting everybody know. And I'm so happy for you. It's so exciting. How does it feel? It feels way better to know what the hell is going on. I don't, I do believe that you could be breatharian uh, or liquidarian or fruitarian in your pregnancy. I have seen it on YouTube. These women look beautiful. They seem happy. Wow. Yes. But that being said, uh, it's not for me. My body wasn't efficient enough. My body's not ready for that. I was eating, you know, some some whatever I was not like breatharian liquidarian for years having prepared for that and for me my body was clearly begging hey we need substance it doesn't even want the juice and even now I can only have like one to two juices a day as uh my drink to my meals so as soon as I found out so what happened was I left the doctor in total shock. And then I went straight to a same day ultrasound that I was lucky enough to find, saw baby, found out baby was very healthy, measuring, this was like three, four weeks ago, measuring eight and a half weeks. So now I'm about 12 weeks and a heartbeat strong, everything. And they kept on saying, wow, your bowels, your bowels are moving so much. You have such active bowels. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. I know, you know, like that's hilarious. You know, my bowels don't look like everybody else's. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, I'm so happy for you. And with Nina, so with my daughter, I became raw vegan in 2016. And then like it totally changed my life, right? And I didn't believe in supplements back then. I was just like, I feel so great. This is the be all end all. And then I got pregnant in 2017, I guess it was like the end of 2017. And then I had her in 2018. And it was like, perfect. It was a great pregnancy. I was a little bit sick in the beginning. And I was mostly raw vegan for the whole pregnancy. And then it was a great birth. She was like the happiest baby. They were like, she's the healthiest, happiest baby ever. And then everything went great for the first year. And then there were some problems. So like looking back, I think I just made such huge errors, but you live and learn. I mean, 
I don't know why I wasn't thinking to like check my blood work, make sure everything's okay. Cause it's just like, I feel like with the growing baby, they need, so you need just so many nutrients. So that was a huge issue. And I wasn't supplementing because I didn't believe in supplements. And then we reached a point where we were both deficient and some problems happened. And then so I started supplementing. I feel great. I've been supplementing since. And then, so we took a different path with her. So she's not raw, but I do see people who they can make it work. I think it's important though, like from just from me and my experience that if people are going to do it, they like, just make sure they're very careful. I don't think it's a place to like mess around just after what I went through. So fortunately, Victoria's fine. Everything's great. She's four. She's thriving. She is the happiest person I've ever met. She is like my soulmate. And we are just like, oh my God, I love her so much. And she's always been just the happiest soul I've ever known. But I think people just, I mean, no matter what your diet, even like check your blood work. But if you're living this lifestyle, like check it. That, that's my two cents. That's like what I think. I think it's so important. And if you're going to be raw or vegan, like stay on top of the supplements, make sure you monitor everything and make sure everything's okay. So what's your plan? Like, do you supplement at all? Is that like, do you check the blood work or no? Uh, so after seven months on juice, I had my blood work done. Not since. Uh, and it was all perfect. Everything was perfect. My daughter has never had blood work because I don't believe she, I don't believe in taking her blood um, right now. She's healthy. Everything's great. There's no reason to in, uh, have to expose her to something like needles right now. So she is fine. We don't supplement. We do herbs. Um, that being said, if there was ever something that changed, of course, I'd be open yeah. to that. I'm always open to my journey and to my learning. And I, uh, you know, have major respect for you and your beautiful motherhood experience. And like, not everyone's the same and nothing yeah. is right or wrong. It's like, we have to find our way. So that was just what worked for us. And how so, has she been? Like, how has she been? Cause she's in school, right? So like, mm -hmm. how would you say she compares to the other kids? Like, and has she been totally thriving or have you had any issues? And like, what does she typically eat in a day? Sure. Um, so, uh, let's see. So she, it, she started, she was exclusively breastfed. I had a mostly raw vegan pregnancy. She was exclusively breastfed for six months. Then she started in solid foods. We started mm -hmm. low with just like, you know, few ingredients, you know, like everyone does banana, avocado, slowly introducing once a week, something new monitoring as we went. And then we transitioned her to raw veganism because we were so into that. So we would give her whatever we were eating. And a lot of the time she'd be like, ah, like scream at, just kind of scream at me. And she wasn't really into all these fancy intricate things that we were making for ourselves with lots of ingredients and greens and whatever. Um, and she, it was kind of frustrating because I was trying to make content and I'd like bring her these amazing meals and she'd be like, ah, and I'm like, okay. I have like tons of videos of her just like shouting at me, <laughs> Yeah, but she did find things she loved, you know, like, and we got her staples down. But then as we went through our transformation as liquidarian fruitarians for seven months, we were like, why don't we do this for our daughter? Like, we feel amazing. So it was weird and scary at first. I was like, can I really just give her this fruit? Mm -hmm. And she actually was mad about one thing. And that was cashew cheese. She ate a lot of cashew cheese every day. Um, and she was like, where's my cashew cheese? And we just kind of like, we're like, there's none in, we didn't, we don't have any right now. We haven't gone to the store for the cashew cheese. That lasted like three days, just like a, a human who's taking something out, you know, like you, you get over it and move on if, if it's your path and it suits you. So she just like loved eating fruit. It was pretty quick. And then for like a while, she was just eating like, Oh, I just want grapes. Just want kiwis. Just want this like very much mono meals, lots of lots of fruit. Like I have to go to the store almost every day to get us both enough fruit and juice. And she did go through some detox. She had fever. She had, you know, lots of congestion when we removed the raw foods and we just had her on fruit and we felt kind of bad. Like, you know, should we slow this detox? Is this going to end? Are we doing torturing our child? Like, should we really even be doing this? And um, before we could even think about that, she was good. And there was no more uh, colds or anything. She really hasn't been sick at all this year at all. But she mm -hmm. did go through that period of time um, when we were transitioning her. And now that I am pregnant, um, I am 
eating. I, so I wanted to tell you that day that I found out I was pretty much like water fasting coming from all this fasting and eight and a half weeks pre pregnant at the time. And I, and you know, you have to drink so much water for an ultrasound. So I drank all this water and I was like, I'm going to puke if I drink more water, let alone mm -hmm. anything else. So it was pretty much like water fasting half the day. Then I was like, okay, I'm pregnant. Now I need to start, like, I need to break the fast. It had been 20 days. So I didn't want to just go to like, whatever I wanted. I was like, okay, I'm going to eat fruit. So I ate some fruit for some hours. And this is when my friend, our friend, John Bordenaro, he called me and we were chatting and I was like, I told him the news because we're pretty close and I was in shock and he happened to call me on that day and he's talking to me and I'm like, John, I feel like I'm going to throw up. I'm eating fruit. It's not enough. I, I got to go. And he's a man. So he's telling me, oh, you know, just eat this or eat that. And I'm like, I just, I got to go. I, I'm going to throw up, you know, like I got to go figure it out. So I ate the fruit and then I had like a soup with some fats in it. And I was like, I'm still nauseous. It's not enough. You know, I had just done all this fasting, not knowing. And so then I went to the store and I honestly um, just got some like vegan cooked food because mushrooms didn't yeah. look good. Cucumbers yeah. didn't look good. Nothing looked good. I was yeah. like, I do not want any of that damn raw food. And it was like, what's happening to me? You know, <laughs> like, but I have to be honest in my story. I'm not here to like try to present some like story that's not real. So this is my yeah. real story. I got some like vegan pasta at the local co-op and I try to get lots of raw foods too. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to listen to my body. I ate that whole pasta that day. It was like, you know, a serving size. And usually when I eat cooked foods, I feel really gross and dull and like lowers my vibe. This time it was like, oh my God, I feel, I feel normal for the first time yeah. in a month. That's good. And yeah. The nausea went away. Like, good. Uh, and now I'm just like more open to everything because yeah. like everybody's bodies have different needs and everybody has to be careful and, you know, work on that. And I think that the, for me, the healing and the juice fasting is that the fruit fasting and the juice fasting is a healing time and we don't need to do it all the time. And for me, um, I'm super happy with whatever makes anyone mm -hmm. happy and healthy and feel good. But I was like, wow, this is an epiphany food is great. And so from there, of course, I'm, uh, I had like three days of just like crazy eating like vegan cooked food. And mm -hmm. then of course I started to have some digestive upset because I went from a month of fruit yeah. to this. And For so sure. I had some gas and bloating and that's kind of normal in pregnancy. But then I was like, okay, I'm going to just eat raw. And from there I've been eating like juice, then fruit. And then by noon, by 11 o'clock, I start eating any raw foods I want. Um, then I eat more juice and fruit. And then I have a lot of raw food for dinner. And I pretty much like eat all night right now. Mm -hmm. I think my body is catching up on weight and calories. And I'm good with that. And That's Nina good. is highly affected by what I eat. You know, she's mm -hmm. watching me. She's seen what mommy's doing. What are you eating? I want to eat that. So when my diet changed so much, we were eating fruit and juice together, soups and stuff and like light raw foods. Now she will eat fruit all day, juice all day. And then she always checks out what I'm eating. She doesn't like greens. Um, she doesn't like green juice. She will eat raw mushrooms. She eats salads. Sometimes she'll pick out the, the stuff she likes out of the salads, leave the greens. But yeah, I share with her anything I'm eating if she's interested in it. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Well, I've loved hearing your story. It's been so awesome. I love it. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, like to end off, do you have any advice for somebody out there who might be going through a hard time, who might still be in like that addiction phase or like not feeling good and just any like boost for them or like advice or tips or books or like anything at all that comes to mind that could maybe give some inspiration to them? Yeah. Um, so I would say, you know, like I came from the darkest dark time. Like, I don't know many people who have really had that much of a nightmare of a uh, rock bottom. I didn't share all of it. And it was just really insane. And I thought that I was just this broken loser with no, no ability to do anything. And now I'm here, you know, and it, if I can do it, anyone can do it. And it just takes 
a lot of time. You don't want to think like tomorrow I'm going to be perfect and just do everything. It's like you need to celebrate your little wins. If you have been binge eating, you feel out of control, you're overweight, you feel so down about it. Maybe you have addictions. If you have like one, you know, juice in the morning, celebrate big time. And, you know, Mm -hmm. because if we are our own um, enemies, then we're never getting anywhere. If you're focused on like all the stuff you did wrong today, then how are you going to get the motivation to do well tomorrow? So my biggest advice is self-love. Proceed with self-love always. Almost everything is a lesson and progress. So say you ate uh, Papa John's pizza by mistake out with your friends, whatever the gar- most garbage, junk, fast food stuff you could find. How did you feel? Did you like it? Is it something you want to keep doing? It's your life. If you feel like it wasn't good and it was a um, downer, don't beat yourself up. That's great. Now, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well said. And I just want to ask you one more thing. What, cause you're talking about juicing too. What's your favorite juicing recipe? Well, that's hard because like the juice is all changed and I've got these weird things going on, but I think what I love most and the staple in our home, because it's a lot of work keeping my daughter with like 32 ounces of fresh juice every day and myself. I like watermelon because it's just easy. It's like, me too. I, I like it with mint. So it's the best. It's so, and it juice is so good in the Nama. I juice, I had to use, uh, I did a comparison video with the Breville and the Nama and then I did a green juice. But then after I tried some watermelon in the Breville and it like, not to knock Breville, it's not my style. I don't mean to do that. But it, my old juicer, it didn't give like barely any yield of the juice compared to the other one. But that juicer, I mean, like I said, I don't like to talk bad, but it did get me through my juice fast 37 days and it was way back. It was good at the time. And if that's in your budget, then a juicer like that, like any juicer, just to get started, if you can't afford the Nama, then go on Kijiji, ask a friend to borrow one because juicing can and will likely totally change your life. And I just have one more question. What about people who say, because I know you recovered from an eating disorder. What about people who say, because sometimes people do comment on my channel with juicing videos or raw videos or they say this lifestyle is like an eating disorder. So do you, I'm curious, do you have any thoughts on that? If people say that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. That's been brought up to me a lot and I've thought it over it a lot. Um, so here are the main differences between an eating disorder and a healing lifestyle. And first of all, if you have an eating disorder, you have an emotional disorder and you are not facing your emotions. You're not uh, treating yourself nicely, you're hurting yourself, you might be binging, purging, starving is different than fasting, or, you know, just straight binging all the time. And all of those things are self abuse. When you are in a healing lifestyle, you are only operating in self love, if you're starting to hurt yourself, or you're feeling feelings of self hurt, or self abuse, then you need to work on trauma, and you need to work on pulling out those emotions. I spend uh, more money on my food right now than I have ever in my life for the last two years. I, you know, I will buy uh, any food that is beneficial for me. It's like my biggest spending is getting to the grocery every day to get these beautiful things. If I was anorexic, how could I consume over a thousand dollars worth of food every single month? And why would I spend all my time at the grocery store? Nothing's coming back out. I'm keeping it in. I'm processing it. And I feel good. So that is the main difference is that you're operating from self love, then self hate, and you feel good about it. And you feel authentically showing up as you rather than I have a dark secret where I'm secretively trying to control myself in a self abusive way. So those are the two, those are the big differences in my well opinion. Said. Yeah, that really clarifies it. That's well said. Well, it's been so great having you on and everybody go follow Jules. I'll link everything down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did give it a big thumbs up right now and make sure to subscribe for more great videos, just like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.